he's a, he's a great actor. I don't, did you think you, I was offering you the lead at the time? No, he, he sent me the script, and I, I literally I, I said, well, what's it going to be, like the, the milkman again, or what? <laughs> um, and he goes, no, Frank. I'm like, the guy? <laughs> yeah, the guy. Oh, fuck, yeah. Uh, in a second. Uh, but I was kind of blown away that he wanted me to be the guy. I thought, you know, I, I was going to be a, a shoe salesman or something in, in a part. You know what I like about is uh, uh, we did a couple of the scenes. Joel had, uh, uh, he, he, <laughs> he broke his shoulder. Uh, his moped my, tire exploded. My Vespa, Vespa tire is a scooter. It's not a moped. <laughs> sorry. Oh, sorry. Hey, that's a blue dildo on my ass, not a pink one. <laughs> There's a huge, huge difference. So, <laughs> so he's, he, you're really, during the gun scene, when he's buying the gun, he's really high. And when he's talking to the doctor, he's really high. And you can't even, you can't even move your arm during the, when he's looking at the AK-47. But I sent him. It was uh, fun. I just sent him and the that the guy who's selling the gun isn't an actor. Well, I guess he's now. But he's uh, he was our armorer on the movie. He was the guy who supplied the guns. And I, and Bob's like, well, we've got this scene, and he's just gonna riff because he knows everything in the world about guns. And you don't say anything. All right, Bob, sounds great. He's a, <laughs> the guy's never acted in his life, and just let him go with it. All right. Well, I think he, he did a really good job. Yeah, he was great. Yeah. Yeah. He's really good. Do you have any questions for the hippie? <laughs> you, use, you use Frank Frosty's pieces for stuff you want to save us, and I think it works really well, except for the Diablo Cody line. Because <laughs> I don't know. I, I've uh, I've never seen that movie. Uh, when I saw Diablo Cody on Oprah, that's when she fucking lost me because I think Oprah is Satan. And that's and, gonna be a, that's gonna be an essay question on English exams for decades to come. So I don't know the difference between that. I just uh, I just think uh, uh, the the fact that that character craps out a baby and everybody thought it was wonderful and. It made Oprah cry. I was like, oh, this is going to be evil. <laughs> <laughs> yes. okay, I have a question from the cover. Sure. We have a long haired, bearded guy. So why is so much bigger than me? <laughs> See? I'm not it. Um, thank you. <laughs> Just a pure Canadian compliment. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Just take it. So, so we have anyone in the uh, balcony? Yes, all the way in the back, yell it out like you mean it. Can you hear me? Oh, yeah. sure. I want to know about uh, uh, your influences from Bilderberg Group, any kind of like secret society, what your opinions are. <laughs> A conspiracy nut. Oh, am I a conspiracy nut? No, not in any way. Because I don't believe in conspiracies because everybody's got such a big fucking mouth that, it, it, you know, I, I think like the 9-11 stuff is, is, is people can't believe that our foreign policies are so shitty that they would make other people so irate they'd want to kill 4,000 uh, individuals who were, you know, who were, 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 were shouldn't have died, you know, I mean, I, I just think our egos are so big, we go, oh, well, it couldn't be how we are acting uh, uh, globally, it must be a conspiracy. It's easier for people to think that George Bush fucking caused the plane crash than our overall shitty policies. But this movie's not political, by the way, don't, I'm not, I'm really not political. I don't believe in the government of the United States, and don't confuse me with some crackpot fucking teabag douche either. <laughs> On the side here. Boy, do I sound like Frank. I didn't realize I am Frank. <laughs> By the way, if you run into me, I'm fairly happy, right? <laughs> so, uh, uh, so if I ever remember, a baby got killed with a shotgun within the first minute or two. Yeah. But like, would you be willing to compromise the film at all if you meant you got wider distribution for it? Are you half, or is it like you're not touching it, you're done, and it's gonna be what it is depending on where it goes? Um, 
What, would I cut out the baby getting shot if it meant more people would see it? Not just that though, but like. You know, no, I don't think so. I mean, I mean, I mean, I say this now, and then I'll be some hypocrite that would cut it out. But, but it seemed to be one of your favorite elements. So why would I, why would I cut it out? You know? Look, if, if you had a graph of my career, I, I sold out so much as a young man. <laughs> Why as a middle-aged guy would I want to do that? And which film company do you work for? In the white shirt. Uh, is there actually anything that you felt you couldn't put into this movie? That like when you were writing it, was there a part where you were like, that's too much? <laughs> and if so, what was it? <laughs> I don't know. I had other scenes that just didn't make it because of restraints. You know, I had this one scene where Frank was, uh, 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 hallucinating, and he's and, and Stephen, the kid from the American Idol show, is uh, he's Christ being crucified, right? And uh, all the judges are are the soldiers poking him, and then, and then Frank looks, and he and Roxy are on the other sides of uh, of of Stephen, and Stephen says, "Help me," to Frank, and Frank rips his nails out and pulls a machine gun out and just starts mowing down the Roman soldiers, but I didn't have enough money to do that. <laughs> and there was another scene where sh he, they're, they're uh, shooting, uh, uh, well, I'll, uh, they're shooting some people, and uh, she turns into Joan of Arc, and, uh, and, and uh, but whatever. <laughs> God bless America too. <laughs> that is Alice Cooper, by the way, at the end of the movie. Uh, for you young folks, and then there's, uh, and that, and when, uh, and when these guys are, the JFK, when you're, uh, hello, hooray, yeah. We got time for probably two more questions here, so yes. Yep. How did you get the voice of Spongebob's Mervance to yes in this movie? Um, well, well Tom Kenny, uh, he, he's actually, you know when that guy peeks up? in the office and get shot? That's Tom Kenny, that's SpongeBob. I'm sure Nickelodeon would be really happy about that. And then, um, he's just, Tommy's so talented. He's a lot of the voices all through the movie, a lot of the fake radio, TV, uh, you know, Kelly Go Bex, you know, all that shit's Tommy. But I've known Tom Kenny since I was six years old. We met in uh, first grade, we were introduced by a crying nun. This nun was, in, she was, <laughs> she couldn't breathe, and she was dragging me into his classroom. And she said, I can't take him anymore. And, uh, it's a true story. And then Tom introduced himself at lunch because he thought he wanted to meet me because uh, he thought it was cool that I could make a grown nun cry. And, uh, he's like, I like your style. And one more here. Yep, on the very end. Yep. We're all America. This is North America. Uh, uh, sorry, Canadians love to fucking bust our balls about that. If I go, if I go, uh, yeah, you know, in America, uh, you're in America. It's North America. Really? Because whenever we fuck up anything globally, they don't go, America, not the Canadians. They all know what the fuck we're talking about. So you guys need to lighten up on that shit. Right. So you're American, yes. Oh, good. Um, yeah, yeah. Um, and I want to know like, where you think it fits in with all your other work because Colin said it's a guy that, like, it, it fits in and I can see that. But, like, I don't know. Do you feel like that you're a misanthrope? Do, do, do you feel like you hate humanity? Like, where does this fit in? Well, but, you know, the other movies had, had happier endings, you know? So, I mean, I, 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 I think tonally it fits in with the rest of them, but I also feel that that all these movies, until I do like a picture that's based on real historic figures or something, they're, they're like little fables. I know it sounds pretentious, you know. You know, now that I'm an auteur, whenever I hear myself talk, I like to punch me in the fucking throat, you know. It's like, really, dude from Police Academy, really? That's really what you think? But, uh, you know, I see these all. I see the last three movies as just little fables. They're not supposed to be an accurate portrayal of. Uh, of <laughs> Never mind. I really do. It's so much. I do edit myself. I was about to say that. <laughs> Thanks. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you very much. Let's hear it. Thank you very much. Thanks. Remember to vote for the Cadillac Civil Service Award, Midnight Madness Edition. And come on back tomorrow night. We have.
You're next by the director and writer of A Horrible Way to Die and more mayhem to follow in the week. Thank you very much. Oh, she didn't catch him. Oh, they're going to the back there.